What the Buddha Never Taught has been reincarnated in the book world. 20 years ago, the curious writer Tim Ward toured Asia. After six years on the continent, he stayed in a Buddhist monastery in Thailand to observe and record himself and his fellow seekers. The result was a book called What the Buddha Never Taught. The new edition with forward by ethnobotanist anthropologist, our friend Wade Davis, is now available. It is my pleasure to welcome Tim Ward to Studio 4 to tell us more. This must be a very good book if you convinced Wade Davis, that smart guy, to write the foreword. Well, Wade and I are actually really good buddies. We um, met on stage at the Vancouver Writers Festival oh. almost 20 years ago now, but it turns out we live basically in the same neighborhood near Washington, D.C. So ever since that first encounter here in Vancouver, he and I have you know, spent vacation time together. We regularly go kayaking on the, mm. on the Potomac River. And we talk over our plans for writing books and things mm. like that as we paddle up and down the streams. Uh, did you convince him at any time to uh, spend some time in a monastery? Well, you know, um, Wade is an incredibly gracious man. He's traveled all over yeah. the world. And he sometimes uh, compares his way of traveling as sort of going and seeing everything and synthesizing things all together. But I more tend to sort of dive in really deep. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm likely to convince Wade to shave his head and uh, <laughs> uh, live a simple life mm -hmm. wearing just uh, one, one robe and, and begging for his rice in, rice in the village. That's not the way that he, that he does it. But for me, being able to go in deep into a few cultures has really been the way mm -hmm. to, to, to my own spiritual growth and finding things that are interesting sure. to explore and write so about. So you are a true seeker. 20 years ago, you, you were in Asia, writing, mm -hmm. traveling, and you decided to actually, what's it called? Uh, encase yourself in a monastery, apply <laughs> yeah. at the door? Mm -hmm. What? Well, you, um, there's no, I think you just go, and then the, the real, the real threshold is you become ordained to be part of the community. Mm. And that's a religious ceremony in which the Ajahn accepts you as like a disciple of the place and you have to take certain vows and agree to follow certain precepts while you're there. And many of these precepts, you know, are kind of similar to the Ten Commandments. Don't kill, don't steal, don't lie. Mm -hmm. But then there's some that are sort of strange, like don't engage in incorrect speech, which includes talking about things that the monastery sees as not important, like politics sports, relationships, <laughs> pretty much everything mm -hmm. that you see talked about on, certainly on talk shows, but really in our culture, and we talk about mm -hmm. these things all the time. Talk, 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 talk. The monastery says, be quiet. Silence. Yeah. Silence is golden. Uh, do not speak. I read this in here. Do mm -hmm. not speak unless you can improve on the silence. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, it means think about what you're going mm. to say. Are you actually saying something that needs to be said? And the, the monks are exhorted and we were exhorted not to waste our time really? talking. But, but why is that important? It's important because our minds are constantly going. The Buddhists call this the monkey mind. Mm. The fact that our minds constantly jump from topic to topic. They need to be entertained and engaged. And when you silence that, well, first of all, you create a great deal of internal stress because the brain wants to be continually amused. Underneath that desire for amusement is a dissatisfaction. And you need to deal with that dissatisfaction to get to the point where you can begin the real Buddhist work of experiencing calm and serenity. See, that's curious to me because we blame uh, a bad day on the misery around us. Now, if you're in a monastery and there's no misery around you and you're just with you, being silent, contemplating life, uh, paying attention to your breath, what do you blame unhappiness mm -hmm. on? Th this is exactly, exactly what happens, um, Fanny. Uh, in fact, you think, hey, we're here at this monastery, there's no real work to do. It's really a stress-free environment. But when you are in a stress-free environment, you see how much stress is created internally mm -hmm. from exactly that need of the brain to keep itself right. amused. And that, that's why, to me, being in, the, in a monastery really brings you to you know, the beginning of the spiritual task, mm -hmm. to take a look at what is the cause of your suffering and what, is it, what can it take to relieve you from that. Now, in our society, we tend to keep ourselves so frenetically entertained that we um, 
don't n even really notice the dissatisfaction until we mm -hmm. go get a checkup and we discover our, you know, our blood pressure is mm -hmm. high, or or we may just discover that we've been running around so much we're we're exhausted. Multitasking. Look at how how we, we ha you multitask in this world right sure. right now. Um, that's the monkey mind mm. keeping us running, mm -hmm. but running from what? And no, exactly. Good question. Uh, and no cell phones in the monastery, of course not. And there are other rules. One meal a day. Yes. Night or noon or does Breakfast. it matter? Breakfast. That's it. And you have to beg for that meal. The monks every morning, they gather their bowls together and they go for a long ritual walk through the neighboring villages. And villagers will put food in their bowls. Then we come back to the monastery and we eat that food communally. The food or the money? The, the food. food. No, no, there's no, oh, there's no money involved. No money. They only put food in the, food in the bowls. Mm -hmm. But it's very humbling coming from a, a, a North American uh, background to go and be dependent on Thai villagers for your sustenance. It breaks that self-reliance sure. that we see is really important to us here. You become humble. Oh, these people are mm. supporting me. I have to take seriously the work of of meditation and practice. Right. Tell me about some of the characters. Uh, Jim, your friend, uh, white guy. Yeah. Many white guys. You didn't spot Leonard Cohen. No, Leonard Cohen wasn't there. This, okay. this monastery is half English, foreigners, and half Thais, mm -hmm. and it works bilingually so that foreigners could come and become immediately engaged in the authentic Thai Buddhist practice. So some of the people who were there were the head monk at the time who was an Australian ex-jazz guitar player who had had to give up his music to become a, a mm. monk. Uh, another one who I remember was a, an American man who was a former real estate tycoon. A millionaire. A millionaire, multimillionaire. He literally left everything behind, walked out, left his wife, left his job, left his empire to have a hut in the jungle with mm -hmm. you know, his robes and his one meal a day. And he said he was happier there than he ever was when he was running things. Right. Now, and he still talked, by the way, like a real estate tycoon. He, like he was trying to sell you something all the, all the <laughs> right. time. Like his enamel yeah. bowl yeah. with the rice in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's but, very interesting because, you know, they say if you make billions and, and you think that will make you happy and it doesn't, life is really miserable. Yeah. Uh, so you go to the monastery and you give up your jazz and your music and uh, your money f briefly or for a long time, depending. Mm -hmm. uh, what feeds your soul inside when you're there? Yeah. You know... Um, no lust in the belly. Yeah, there's not much that feeds you, I have to say. In a sense, if really what you're doing is you are stripping down. This is like a detox program, mm -hmm. but imagine a psychic detox that strips away everything to do with your culture, everything to do with your personal identity. Your hair is shaving, your clothes are taken away, you just have a robe that you, that you wear. Those who actually become monks, they lose their name. They're given a monastic name. Like instead. Meow. Well, that's, it was his nickname, so people still get nickname? nicknamed. Yeah, he okay. was a, a little Thai monk whose nickname was Meow. He looked rather cat-like too. Mm -hmm. So people do get do get nicknames, but the thing is, you strip away ev all the um, all the dross of human being, and then you see what's mm -hmm. left. And where you find what's left is in your breath, and in learning to meditate, and in learning to feel what is inside of you when there's no prompts. And so you're in a meditating position, which means there's a certain way to sit. Mm -hmm. so or, you learn, stand. or stand or yeah, walk. Or walk. And when you say pay attention to your breath, yeah. what does that mean? Okay. Um, the breath is, is a fundamental tool for Buddhist meditation. Yeah, thank you. I saw you breathe mm -hmm. there. And when you come back to your breathing and you start focusing on your breathing, you can actually quiet the mind just by focusing on how the breath feels in your nostrils. Mm. So if you breathe in, and you feel it going through your nostrils and down your throat and into your lungs and you can become aware of the cavity in here that fills with air and then you exhale and that bellows contracts and, and it goes out and there's a rhythm to that. And when you can oh. find that rhythm, you find really the, the fundamental base of okay. your nature as, as, as a living being. And do you have to remember wh whether you had a specific thought on the in-breath or the out-breath or is it that specific? Yeah. You, you don't for this. This is very, very simple. It's just 
becoming conscious of yourself as a breathing, mm -hmm. living organism and staying with that, not letting your mind bounce off to all the other places that it wants sure. to go. And when you can find that, you can get a deep and sustained calm. Mm -hmm. 